Everyone, welcome to the podcast for dog people by Possum University. A slight change from what you might be used to if you listen to our other podcast episodes, but we're uh, kind of moving more in a direction of general um, dog stuff. This is all going to be about dogs, and we really want to reach out to all of the dog owners and um, be a little bit more transparent about what this podcast is about because it's really kind of grown into more than a dog training podcast. It's... You know, it's so much more than that. We always cover animal welfare news, regular dog news. We always talk about um, enrichment, things like that. So we're going to take a slight turn, make it a little bit different. So if this looks different to you, um, I promise you it's still a lot of the same old Possum University, but with a new name and a fresh look. So today we're going to be talking about we started our own dog rehab center. So do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah. So... Uh, like John said, if you've been following, you already know that if you have listened to the podcast before and followed our journey, it has been a long time coming when we decided to buy our form, our farm two years ago this month, uh, we have to celebrate by the way, just dawned on me, um, Mm. that that was what we wanted to do. And we were very naive when we first moved in thinking that we would have it up and running in a month. Yeah, no, it took a little longer than that. (laughs) Um, it's just funny. You can look back now and at the time we were frustrated and obviously I think it needed to happen for a reason. Um, the second we moved in, I got pregnant and, uh, it just, you know, things, things went a different way. And I think, uh, silver lining, you look back and you're like, okay, those things had to happen in a way on purpose to make it what it is now, because we were able to put together the shelter and rescue solutions, and we didn't have that prior. Right. So you want to talk about that real quick, and then I'll go back to the rehab. Yeah, so it's basically a spinoff of our regular dog training company, Possum University, but we're really focusing on providing solutions to shelters and rescues, and solutions could be um, for the smaller rescues that don't have a training staff. Well, we can do like trainer on retainer kind of thing where we'll provide their training services, their, their evaluation services, whatever they need. Um, we will provide operations, consulting, logistics, uh, fundraising, any way that we can really help them out. Working with is, the fosters. is kind of our goal. Yeah. Uh, yeah, working with fosters directly, working with potential adopters. And that's really where this has gone as far as um, we are now. This is, We have five dogs that have come in now. Yes. Um, we still have two with us that are, we're working on. We're doing small increments. So the first three are already adopted and in a home. And now we have Dozer and we have Cece from two different rescues who came over the last week. And, um, but yeah, the first one, Thor was our first one. If you followed us on Instagram, you saw Thor was with us for a few weeks. We did a lot of work with him and he got an amazing home. Now, meanwhile, Thor was in the shelter system for years. Yeah, a really long time. And he just kind of adopting him. You know, if you're involved in animal rescue, you know what it's like. We're just some dogs have a very long length of stay. And that was Thor. And that that is a lot of the dogs that are coming to us. That was the the other two. We got two beagles that were research beagles from a research facility that were released from the research facility and had their own quirks. One of them or or both of them had a bite history. One on a child and two, two on a child. Yeah. 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 So. You know, we get we get these kinds of dogs, these dogs that are sitting for a long time, and these rescues have don't have a lot of options, and we're providing them with an option that they well, don't. Well, I was really explaining have. it to another shelter yesterday that was actually calling uh, another rescue was calling to hear about our program and to learn about it and what they could possibly benefit from it, and we were discussing that as a rescue or a shelter, all you do is post your dogs that need adoption, mm-hmm. and. Not that people get sick of it, but that's the only content that they have. So p- it, people get blind to yeah. it. And well, they it's, just a, it's like the, the Febreze commercial. People get nose yeah. blind to a certain smell. Absolutely. It's the same thing. I mean, and especially there's a lot of people who like to follow a lot of different rescues and it's just, just kind of more of the same. So we have to think out they of the lost. box on how to promote these dogs and really get a better understanding of who they are, what their quirks are, who would be a really good match. And so far... I mean, we're we're three for three, yeah, and hopefully we're going to be five for five in a few weeks. We'll yep. we'll see, but this is really like the next step for us is really this rehab and and being able to make meaningful change and be a meaningful resource for these rescues. So yeah. it's a dream now, come true. 
uh, the nitty gritty of that is um, on our nine acre property, we have um, a horse barn that we converted uh, into our rehab facility. There are um, two stalls that we completely changed around. John put down turf. Um, they have their own AC, their own heat. They have music. They have essential oils. They've got everything that a dog could possibly want to decompress and calm themselves down and be in a, in a nice environment. Um, so they'll come in and we kind of assess where they're at. So each dog that has come in has had its own set of issues. So we don't, and that's exactly what I was explaining to the, the person I was talking to yesterday from the, the rescue board is, you know, whatever the dog's issues are, one, we've never turned anybody away and we never will. And two, we'll figure out a way to work with them. So even if they don't essentially work out the issue here, we will support the adopters once they take that dog to ensure that they are not going to struggle with those issues. So I think that is a big thing that, you know, other board and trains and facilities aren't doing. It's kind of like, I'll train your dog and then that's it. But we're trying to make this a lasting experience and make it very intentional for the specific dog. And I think that's what sets it apart. But it's also very meaningful for us um, because that's how we wanted it when we were in the shelter world. Yeah. Yeah. It's We're signing on for a commitment to that dog. Um, like Thor. Thor didn't have Thor. anywhere else to go. Thor. So That was it. I mean, so he boarded with us after his training and he was doing really well, we basically were just waiting for somebody to come for him. And like I said, our our um, followers on Instagram, it's a different poll because there's training information. There's more fun content on there. So you're going to get people that aren't looking to adopt. And I think it was Thor's dad's friend from New Jersey sent it to him all the way in PA. And he came two hours away to come and get him. Mm -hmm. And they've been living blissfully. So it's a different market. And um, it just, you know, it's working for these dogs who don't normally get eyes on them. Yeah. Well, what I was saying was that it's when a dog comes in and we take them on, it's not just they're here for three weeks and we're kicking them to the curb. Mm -hmm. or it's a commitment. We, we are going to stick with it. We're going to continue to promote them. Our goal is for them to be adopted before they leave our facility. If they're not, we're going to do whatever we can to continue to make sure that staff and volunteers are able to work with this dog and maintain the training that we that we instilled. And then afterwards like you said when these dogs go home we'll facilitate the transition and we're you know it's all free of charges including in in their tuition so it's a commitment and we that's why it's going to be very small we're three months in to doing this i think we're about three months into doing this and we're five to, up to dog number five so it'd be a slow burner but i'm hoping that this is something that not only that we'll be able to do but if you're a positive reinforcement trainer um and this is something that you've always wanted to do. You know, there's only two of us. Yeah. So you should definitely offer, think about offering this service in your area because it's a very, very underserved market. And the only option that a lot of these rescues have is aversive trainers. No, but nobody else does boarding trains. So, um, yeah, so we did it. We opened up our dog rehab facility. And let's not act like it's easy because half the time we're like all over the place with the kids and stuff like that. So we're trying to really make sure that we are touching on everything that we're supposed to be doing, being parents, being homeowners, but also taking care of these dogs, staying up on social media. Obviously, we took a break from the podcast for a long time because it just, there was not enough hours in the day. Yeah. So we are, um, you know, now that Joey's getting older, Joey's the, the younger one. He just started walking. He's about 15 months right now. And um, we're definitely trying to have a work-life balance that is positive for both of us and staying focused and refreshed. And I think we took some good time off this summer and enjoyed ourselves as a family. You know, the kids are only young once, so we're trying to do it all. Try, yeah, we're <laughs> we trying really to do it all. We really are trying to do it all, but it's not easy. So um, if anybody is interested, like John said, in doing this and you're looking for advice, we'll, ha we'll happily chat with you. Yeah, so let's talk about this change on the podcast mm -hmm. it's a it's a pretty big change I and mean, we're sitting next to each other now we're not talking to each other and I, we really wanted to kind of convey this like show feeling like we're talking with you you're here you're hanging out with us um i have decided and kind of we we have decided that we're going to take down all of our old episodes so that's about a hundred podcast episodes we're going to take them down we're going to unpublish them they're not going to be deleted forever but we're going to unpublish them for now until we know what we want to do with them but you talk about five, four or five years of doing this. Um, we've learned a lot. We've grown a lot. 
Um, we've already corrected things that we have said in like season one. And I don't have the time to go through every single episode yeah. and find all the any errors. So in an effort to be responsible with the information that we're putting out, we're going to unpublish those episodes and maybe we'll release them separately to like subscribers or something like that. But for now, we're going to unpublish them this way. If there's any kind of advice that we didn't articulate properly or we're no longer correct on, let's get it out of there. That's our responsibility. And we're going to continue to just provide the most up to date information. So that's this new format for this podcast It's going to be you now uh, we're going to bring reintroduce our segments because I think that those did well. And I think a lot of people enjoyed those. So we'll have a bunch of different rotating segments. Well, we'll talk like today, we're going to do a listener question. We're going to do the trainer's toolbox, which I'll explain what that is later. And then we're going to have some barking news right across my desk this morning. I had Fine. some barking news. So we really hope that you enjoy this new format. Um, it'll be regular. It'll be once a week. As you can see, we put a lot of effort into setting this up and we got this nice, long, big desk that we've been waiting to use. So that's it. Welcome to the podcast for dog people. It's a, a new, a new what? Era. A new era. <laughs> I like it. Um, so, do you want your barking news or do you want to jump into a listener question? Uh, let's do the barking news. All right. Barking news coming to you out of California. Don't sneak. I see you peeking oh, over sorry. here. sorry. Here's a conversation between a woman and her friend. They're sitting in their house, and the friend goes, oh, your dogs are playing in the backyard. And the woman said, I only have one dog. And that's how we oh have. Oh, my God. I will play this. No, is it bad? No. Oh, okay. Can you relax? <laughs> for those listening, I'll explain what's happening. But for those that are watching, I'll overlay the video. But essentially what happened was a, uh, a mountain lion went into this backyard and started playing with the family dog and they were chasing each other around the backyard playing a mountain lion a mountain lion it was caught on security camera but wouldn't a mountain lion want to attack a dog uh, evidently not this one like on paper if they were hungry enough yeah <laughs> oh my god yeah i mean this is this is not normal i only this have is not one normal. dog she said yeah and apparently mountain lions are really on the uh up and up coming into those neighborhoods in California. Oh my goodness. So, what, what part of California is this? That is San. You asked me once, I scrolled oh, off I'm of it. I'm so sorry. San Joaquin County. I've never heard of it. Me neither. But, wow. Shocked California homeowner spots <laughs> mountain lion playing with pet. Insane. That's crazy. California. All right. Listener question. Good barking news there. Barking news. Listener question. This is a question for you. Okay. My dog keeps jumping on the counter and begging for food at the table. All right. So this one, I've gotten this question quite a lot lately. And there's there are a lot of different questions that uh, can can kind of branch off of this one. Like negative attention, right? That's like that's like the big, the big umbrella, so to speak. Okay, so there's kind of like twofold to this, a threefold really. Um, jumping on the counters, uh, looking for things, jumping on the table while you're eating, obviously looking for food, um, demand barking, um, eating things in the backyard or on a walk that they know they're not supposed to pick up, grabbing. Things in the home that they know they're not supposed to have. These all go under that same question. Mm -hmm. And my my training advice usually evokes people looking at me like I am insane. And you've seen it many times. Witnessed it firsthand the other morning. So, and I'll tell that story. So, we are in a business group. Um, and one of the guys came up to me that I haven't really spent a lot of time with. And he's like, listen, like my daughter's dog... So smart, um, really great dog, but he consistently will jump on the counters and then like jump on the table to get food when we're eating as a family. Like, what do we do? So I was like, so are you basically like yelling at him, get down? No. And he's like, oh yeah, all the time, consistently. And I'm like, exactly, that's the problem, right? So if you do, what's the quote? If you do something a thousand times, it's not the person that you're telling that has the problem, it's you. 
you t- if you say it, I think that's, uh, there's a quote. It's like, if you say, if you say something a thousand times the same way and the person is still not learned, it's not the person that is the problem. It's the way that you're conveying it. I get what you're saying. So I, what I was explaining to him in, in with our dogs and in training, we will consistently do a method. Usually it's an old school method. And just expect it to like change over time. And it, and it won't not with those types of things, um, with a demand barking or, um, looking for negative attention, you have to change that by changing the scenario. You have to change the way that the dog looks or sees or feels about the situation. So in this situation, what I basically told him was that if you push all the food back, right, you're sitting down as a family, make sure if he did jump up, he can't get the food. Physically, he can't get the food regardless of what you do or not. Same thing for the counters. Push your, you don't want to puppy proof completely because that's unrealistic. There is going to be food left out. I mean, especially in our house, we have toddlers, so it's just insane. So push all the food back. So even if the dog does jump up, they physically cannot get the reward, okay? So that's one thing that you already knocked off your list is them physically getting the food reward or thing reward, okay? Now, the second thing is doing absolutely nothing, don't flinch, don't look, don't say anything, don't correct. You need to act as if one, you cannot hear the demand bark or two, you cannot hear, uh, see what's going on in front of you. Like you don't see them doing anything. It is not eliciting any type of response from you at all. You're not even looking at them. You are going to act like you don't see it. And when I tell you, John looked at me, the guy, John from our group, like I was insane. He's like, you're kidding. I'm like, no, no. Okay. This is, it, this works for almost every dog because what this is, is that you're removing the food, but you're also, if you take away you saying anything, even if it's a correction, you're telling them to get down, tell them no, tell them sit down, whatever. You are taking away both resources because that's the only thing that is driving this. Yeah. All the, uh, removing any positive reward that's associated with it. Because I think a lot of humans don't understand that when we talk to our dogs or we say something to our dogs, it is positive attention for them, even though it is a negative behavior for us. And we have to correlate those two and see what does our dog see? Not, oh my God, he's so annoying when he does this. Doesn't he understand that? Why is he doing this to me? That's how humans take it. That Why are they doing this to me? Your dog does not understand any idea what a human goes through emotionally on a daily basis. They are not concerned with that and they do not have the brain capacity to understand that. You have to throw that out the window because if you let that in, you're letting it muddle the entire thing, okay? Their logic is so different from ours. It's very black and white. It's very, this has happened and then that happened after and I felt this way and that's it, okay? So if Oak Leader were were to jump up on the counter and there was no food for him, I would act like it didn't happen. One of two things are going to happen. For him, it's the second. But if you have a dog who is consistently not getting what they need on a daily basis, and that goes into like meeting your dog's needs, they're going to jump up on that counter, not get the food or the reward or whatever, get nothing from you. And they're going to literally look at you and almost be like, hello, do you not see me on the counter? Because that's how you know they're actually looking for the physical response from you, not so much the reward, uh, the food reward. So if they're doing that, they take something, right? They take a shoe, they take the toilet paper, they take something out of the trash. And then they come and find you and they're like, they show it to you. They are looking for you to chase them. They're looking for you to say something. They're looking for you to get away from your phone, your kids, your TV, your cooking, whatever it is that you're doing. That means that they're not getting their, their cup filled, okay? And that's a big thing. That's the number one thing for our dogs. It's the one thing that I talk about in my sessions immediately. It's the number one topic. Um, so if we're, if that's the case, if your dog is giving you that number one response of like, hey, come look at me, then we got a whole nother issue going on. You're not filling their cup. And we'll talk about that in a second. The second, the second response is them just getting down. They're gonna be like, all right, nobody said anything. There's no food for me to get. I guess I'll get down and go do something else, right? Now the third fold of this, that I said before it was threefold, The third part of this is that now if Oakley's jumping up and he's looking for food or he's bored or he wants to get something from me, that as a human, as his parent, I need to say, what's wrong? Why is he doing that? Is he hungry? Right? Like if Oakley out of nowhere, which he was for a period of time, 
Um, stealing food, which is one of his vices. That's where his anxiety lies. Out of nowhere, it sparked up. And I said to John, I was like, listen, what's going on? Like, why is he so hungry all of a sudden? Honestly, I got very nervous that maybe he was having like, like a, a, an issue, medical. a medical issue because it was, and then he actually guarded from tissue one night, which mm-hmm. is very, very, very abnormal for him. He, I, he's never shown any guarding, neither of them. They love each other so much. They've never had issues like that. Um, so I got very nervous that maybe like it was Addison's or something like Cushing's, like something that was right. Not Addison, Cushing's, um, yeah. that was affecting him and making him more hungry. Um, and we were really trying to figure it out. So you have to play detective with your dog. Is this new? Because if it's new, then you have to figure out why. And if it's old and it's something that's consistent, you have to change up what you're doing to make sure that their needs are being met and then we're setting a boundary, right? Pushing everything back. That's the, the whole training portion of it, that training mock of like making sure that all foods is back and everybody in the family, all your guests know, don't say a damn thing when the dog jumps up on the counter or steals X, Y, Z, Okay but you have to make sure that your dog's needs are met. So I was telling our friend John from the meeting that this dog needs mental stimulation or it's frozen meal, something that's gonna keep the dog busy when they sit down as a family because we just expect our dogs to sit there and be little angels while we eat this four course meal and we're enjoying each other and we're having fun and no one's paying attention to them. It's unrealistic and it's not fair. You would never expect a toddler to do that. Um, so we have to give our dogs something else to do. Now the dog should work on the mental stimulation for like 20 minutes and then they can come and join you by the table. I have no problem with dogs being by the table as long as they're not jumping up and they're not demand barking and they're not begging. Cause then that means that someone's doing something wrong, right? Um, set the boundary of you can be around us, but you're not gonna, you're not gonna bark for food and you're not gonna jump up consistently, right? So you have to ignore that first. Like if the dog, if let's say you're all eating dinner and the dog jumps up, but he can't reach any food. Don't look. I know that's going to be so hard for some of you. Like, why Why would I allow this? You're not so much allowing it. You're ignoring the behavior so the behavior actually goes away. Mm-hmm. That's what it comes down to. You're not, you're not allowing bad behavior. You're acknowledging that your response to the behavior fuels it. Yeah, you're removing the reward. Yes. So try this out. I literally have a client who I just, I had my first session with on, it was like Wednesday or Thursday evening. And she texted me Saturday and she was like, I, I hope I'm not bothering you on a Saturday, but I just had to share this win with you. Her dog was one of four of her dogs was, was consistently the second they would go into the backyard, immediately go to eat the moss, eat the sticks, eat the grass, eat this, eat that, whatever. All things that essentially really weren't harming her. And I said, I literally blew mom's brain. I was like, say nothing. She's like, what? <laughs> I'm like, say nothing ignore it, go play or, or, you know, acknowledge the other dogs or just walk around the yard. And she's like, so what? I just let her eat the moss. And I was like, I guarantee you, she will not consistently eat the moss <laughs> because really yeah. at the end of the day, unless she has chronic IBS and needs the grass because she has a stomach ache constantly, there is no value in that right? There's not a lot of nutritional value from grass or moss. So you have to understand that she's only doing it because your response is so, and again, there's four dogs that are very needy. So there's only two parents, right? You're basically quite, you're, you're cutting your resources in forts and she is, she's the newest of the clan and she's acknowledged that this is how I get mom's attention. So she stopped and she's like, she did not eat moss once today. And I was like, see, I'm not crazy. I swear I'm not crazy. So that was a very long-winded way to answer that question. Yeah, that's that's on par for how you answer questions. So that's okay. So let's, for the first time ever, let's open up the trainer's toolbox and see what we have inside today. Yes, I'm very excited. This is something you, we've been talking about this for a couple weeks now. Um, This. But wait, let me preface. Please. John and I do not suggest any items, products, or anything that we do not use ourselves on a daily basis. Yes. At all. So we actually, we have been in, in contact with this company. They have sent us things to try out, stuff that's not released yet. That being said, we're only in contact with them because we reached out to them because we were using their product for a couple of months. My mom found it first. Yeah. And she was like, oh my God, you have to get this thing. And I was like, what is this thing? And I thought it was crazy. And I was like, oh my God, how did we not think of this first, first off? Yeah. But it's, it, it's a lot of amazing a idea. lot of research went into it, you could tell. Oh yeah. Um, but it's called the Pupsicle. 
And you'll be able to see it if you're if you're, you're watching, watching on it, YouTube. On YouTube, the video version of this, the popsicle. It is essentially a uh, a little cap, not a little. I mean, it's the size of a baseball yeah. capsule that unscrews open, right? And then you have two options. You could either purchase their they're called pops, and they're basically like pre-made balls of, that are treat treats. Balls. These ones are five in one multivitamin pops, so they're also not only are they a refill treat for the popsicle. But they provide vitamins. Mm -hmm. They have um, a couple other uh, flavors. They've got the calming ones that I love. There's like lavender and coconut, and yeah, it's a. They have a. They're so really the, nice. They have the calming one, which the blueberry, is I think, blueberry. good for nighttime. Yeah, they're uh, but basically, you'll you'll place it inside of this baseball-looking thing, baseball-sized thing, and then you'll screw the lid back on, and basically, you have this hole about the size of a quarter. It's like Bane's. Bane from uh, yeah. Batman, like his his thing on his face. Yep. That's what it kind of looks like. It's very durable. Yeah. And essentially the idea is that your dog's just going to sit there and lick and lick and lick. And that's exactly holes. what happens. It's very little mess. It lasts a really long time. And then the biggest perk here is that you can also buy this ice cube tray kind of thing. Well, it comes with it. Well, if you no, do you the buy starter pack. If, no, you you do, do if you buy pack. the starter pack, yeah, but you can just buy a popsicle by itself. Yeah. Uh, but you buy this ice cube tray. This is the small version. It's like the a blue. silicone for who's listening on on the podcast is it's a silicone ice tray almost. But they look they're as like large as like um scotch ice cubes, if you will. Yeah, a little small. They're like golf ball size. Yeah. So you'll you can mix whatever you want. You could use baby food, you could use a little mix of like broth or something, or Literally yogurt. Anything you want. You put them in this ice cube tray, you freeze it. Once they're frozen, pop them out, make more, and you can keep a bunch in bulk. We literally do a Ziploc bag in the freezer of all of them ready to go, so I don't have to keep doing them yeah. over and over again. So instead of having like stuffed bones every week and all this stuff, literally all you do is you pop one out of the tray or you take it out of the, out of the Ziploc bag, mm -hmm. you put it inside of this Pupsicle, and that's it. Yeah. And then you take the Pupsicle apart, you can throw it in your dishwasher, and then get it, you know, next time you get another thing out of the freezer. It takes up very little space. It's a lot cheaper. It's a lot safer. Um, I've this had a couple is, of clients. They're like, oh, well, my dog goes through it quickly. And I'm like, yeah, but you have to understand this is a lot less. Like the, the cube itself is a lot smaller than an entire fold marrow bone. So if you do have to go back every 10 minutes and pop another one in, it's really essentially not a big deal. Yeah, it's probably about a third of I what's inside. I would say a quarter, really. Like a it's, bone. I, I could give four of these in an hour and the two, the two dummies, I love them to death, but I have to call them dummies because they really are. Um, they they would This would keep them busy. For an hour. Yeah. If I just kept popping them in, so, and it would be the same as a marrow bone given in 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. So I prefer this because it takes longer. So it's really them. cool. We've all seen like, obviously the Kong came out and that kind of like was like the industry standard on stuffing a treat and giving it to your dog. Mm -hmm. And then every other company came out with their own copycat. And this is finally something new on the market that performs better is easier to clean because like i said oh, it yeah. screws apart into oh two God. pieces cleaning a kong i would rather i don't even know many yeah. things so it's called the pupsicle it's by woof w-o-o-f you can go to mywoof.com this is not a sponsor we're talking about it because we love it um mywoof.com or you can follow them on instagram at mywoof they just came out with a blue color because right now they it's only so have green because obviously they're a smaller business and they're starting up and but they just released a blue color, which we're going to have to get our hands on. What about the other secret nope. product? Nope. Not yet? Nope. Not yet. Don't even talk about it. Okay. Not yet. End of the year, I believe. Um, so they're, they are coming out with something that we, they sent us to try out. And it's it does exactly what it's supposed to do. So, so yeah. They that, also sponsored um, They sponsored Thor. Thor. And they, they, you know, we have a good working relationship with them now. Yeah. They, they promote the dogs that we have in our rehab center for adoption through their email list, I think which it's is so nice. They don't have to do that. Extremely thoughtful. And so. it was funny. We actually were chatting with the CEO, the, the guy who created this, and he's basically a clone of John. Like they have the same personality and they research things to the, to the nines. And John complimented him on his boxing. The packaging The packaging gorgeous. of this when you get it in the mail is gorgeous. And he mentioned it. And this guy lit up the same way you would have lit up if somebody mentioned something like that about you. Yeah. And I was like, okay, you guys are talking to each other. Like, these vitamin pops are just, it's just smart. 
It's so smart. It's so easy. Again, so I can't believe we didn't come up with it first. Here's the, the ingredients. The first, first two ingredients are beef and peanut butter. It's fabulous. You don't get that in a lot of places. No. All right. So that is our first trainer's toolbox highlight. Yes. And uh, yeah, the popsicle, check it out. I wish that we had some kind of affiliate link on that. But. I know, me too. But well, yeah, mywolf.com. to our Amazon one. It is on our Amazon, on, on our, so I gave you that storefront notes. link. Yeah, I'll put it in the, I'll put if it in the show notes. If you support us, go through our um, affiliate link on Amazon and help us out that way. Yeah. Get Supports a, a us, couple our of, family, our A couple of quarters from Jeff Bezos <laughs> goes into our pocket instead. So... Got to talk about this first aid course. Yeah. We got to talk about it. This is the, uh, really one of the main reasons we haven't been doing the podcast is because 100% of my attention has been going towards creating the first ever entirely online advanced pet first aid and CPR course. It is extremely comprehensive. I like to say comprehensive yet approachable because anybody can take it. You don't need to have experience in first aid. You don't have to already have had to take taking a basic pet first aid course. This is all encompassing. Um, it takes about three and a half hours. Do it online. You get your certification. You get mailed a beautiful. I think I'm a little, I'm a little um, biased, but I think that the you no, get I the certification card you get is beautiful. It's it'll um, be the best like looking card. In your wallet. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would agree with that. Um, and you, it's a two-year certification, and the most important part is that this is the last first pet first aid course or CPR course that you will ever buy. What that means is you have lifetime access, and you have lifetime recertification. So all you have to do is log back into the course, take it over again, cover any modules that you might have missed, brush up on your skills, um, any new modules that are added in, and then you just take the test again and you re-up your certification. So it is the last course you will ever buy. Versus having to keep getting recertified every single year for other ones. Right. And then, don't have what and you, then have. you end up not doing it because you're like, I took the course. It doesn't really matter. So this is like guarantees that you're going to continue to recertify because your investments, I mean, that's it. There's no further investments outside of the initial purchase. Yeah. So it's 147. You can get it at possumuniversity.com forward slash pet first aid. It is now, we're excited to announce it is now endorsed by the National Association of Professional Pet Sitters. Um, we have had a ton of their people come through as students and um, we started sending out the first couple certification cards last week. So if you want to get involved, want to get advanced pet first aid CPR certified, um, that includes trauma, illness, um, dealing with identifying uh, any kind of emergencies, cardiac emergencies, gastrointestinal emergencies, reproductive emergencies. Um, what do you do if your dog has a severe bleeding wound? What do you do if uh, if they have if they get impaled in the eye by something? These are all things that you got to consider. What do you do if you encounter a dog in a hot car? If you don't know the answer to those things, you got to take this course. You got to get certified, especially if you have a dog. If you work professionally with dogs, go hiking. You, you're Go out with hiking. your dogs. You, I mean, the, the horror stories we hear sometimes, even like when we put up the video, the reel on choking, right? We had the episode on mm -hmm. choking and so many people came in like, I had no idea what I was supposed to do. Like some people actually lost their dogs. Yeah. And- you know, yeah, that if you go go back and look for our reel on choking and yeah. read the comments, there's some heartbreaking comments. And in not there. to scare people, but you just don't know. You can't account for these types of things that are going to happen. I mean, the craziest stuff has even happened to our dogs. Yeah. You and know? a lot of, a lot of, there's a lot of bad information out there and it's not like bad, like evil. Yeah. It's just old school. You know, how many of us grew up hearing that? Oh, when your dog's choking, stick your hand down their throat and try and grab whatever they're choking on. Or you could lodge it further down their airway to the point where your back blows or, um, Heimlich's yeah. don't do anything. So you need to know what the proper thing to do is. So check it out. If you want to learn more about it, possumuniversity.com. Can you DM us? You just interrupted my URL. Sorry. Possumuniversity.com forward slash pet first aid. And I will link that in the show notes as well. Or you can DM us <laughs> if you have any questions. <laughs> this is what happens when we don't have headphones on. We'll have I have to know, figure that it's out. true. Um, so yeah, that covers... First aid, listener questions, trainer's toolbox, barking news, and our primary topic today was talking about our rehab center. Is there anything else you'd like to talk about? 
it's a it's a grab bag now whatever you want i think i'm just excited about where we're moving as a company as you know as what we're doing like focusing on certain online courses i think one of my biggest passions moving forward the rest of this year and next year are really going to be uh not only committed to the rehab center which is something i've been wanting to do for a really long time but also putting my knowledge into courses so people can afford proper knowledge mm -hmm. because i understand that you know inflation is up everyone's raised their prices everything's super expensive now and i've had to do the same and which i hate but it's just how it needs to be to support my family so a lot of people will say okay it's too expensive and that's fine i understand that if you don't have the money i don't have the money but i still want to make sure that people get the proper training so my goal moving forward is 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 making it more affordable for you know the average person so they get the proper knowledge and they're not going to like PetSmart for a six week course and they're wondering why their dog's separation anxiety hasn't gone away yet. Yeah. Like that is ridiculous to me that don't waste your money in places that you don't need yeah, it. Yeah, listen, basic obedience. You want to teach a puppy how to sit, stay, all that stuff. Go to PetSmart. You don't want, you don't need Honestly, to be going to no us. no offense to PetSmart, but here's my thing. You are taking a puppy, a dog that you may have just got like yesterday and then you're making them sit and this is any obedience class like this. You're making them sit around all other dogs. They're not allowed to socialize. And you're making them work through these cues when they're not self-regulated. They're stressed out. They're in a, a dog's paradise. There's food and treats and toys all over the place. People walking in, walking out. And it's, it's honestly, I find it to be too hard. And I don't think it's fair. And then these dogs wind up actually getting more stressed out. And I'm not saying every dog. But if your dog is really intelligent and is a little bit more timid, a little bit more sensitive, a um, little bit more raw, they're not going to love that. And that that could essentially scar them a little bit and make them fearful of doing things in the future, socializing once they hit maturity. So I don't love that whole scenario. I don't love that our society does that or that's the first thing we go to when we get a dog. I personally believe in working on things at home or in lower levels of stress and then working up to those types of things. Your dog should be eventually able to go through PetSmart, Petco, whatever. But I don't think it should be the first jump. Not around six other dogs. That's just that's just me personally. I well, know a lot of other I mean, you just jumped right on and uh, hijacked what I was saying and, and twisted it the entire other way. I was saying, don't come to us for basic obedience because unless we're running a course, <laughs> unless we're doing what, one of our eight week or four week courses, you're coming to a, a, a company that does behavior modification yes. for severe behaviors. And then you get sticker shock when you see the price, but like, don't come, you know, it's different. This is, you don't need this kind of training for puppy training. That's when I said, like, go, go ahead, go to PetSmart or a similar, like a, a newer positive reinforcement trainer, give them your business and you know, have you have the basics covered for basic obedience. When it comes to behavior modification, aggression, anxiety, fear, things like that, reactivity, that's when you want to come to us or a, a, another IAABC certified behavior consultant to actually work on those issues with uh, behavior modification and positive reinforcement. But yeah. That's that's the only point I was trying to make. You just went on tangent, and now we're going to get sued by PetSmart. Is that true? No, we're not going to get sued by PetSmart. Nope. All right, that's all we got for this one. I uh, hope you kind of like this new format. We're going to get used to it. We're going to be a little less rusty. It's been a couple months since we've done yeah. an episode. Um, but check us out. If you're not watching the YouTube version, there's going to be a YouTube version of this, a little bit more visually stimulating um, perhaps that entertains you a little more. You get to see our mugs. <laughs> this whole thing. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> metaphorically. Um, yeah, that's all we have for this one. Again, follow us at Possum University on Instagram, P-A-W-S-O-M-E. You can go to possumuniversity.com forward slash pet first aid to learn more about our first aid course and get certified online in just three and a half hours. And, um, yeah, we'll see you next week. We're going to be talking about aggression and dog bites. So next week's going to be a little bit more of an intense episode regarding that. But uh, we'll be right back every Wednesday, and I'm going to shoot for a 7 a.m. upload every Wednesday. That's going to be our goal. Can we stick to it? 
I don't know. <laughs> I've been wrong before. <laughs> we're uh, not very good with schedules. That's the problem. Yeah. But, but we're going to try like hell. <laughs> yeah. We're going to try like hell. Until next week. Class dismissed. <laughs>